this place is the single scariest thing that I've ever experienced. I can't imagine walking over the doorstep. I've traveled all over the world, and this place is the single scariest thing that I've ever experienced. This place is not safe. I'm already feeling like violence. There's something freakish going on inside there. Oh my god, I can't believe you know things. Well, what did you think? I was a fake? I just have this feeling that the next turn we make, there's gonna be something horrible. I heard women, like, screaming. I just saw something over there. I just saw something move right over there. I want to get out of here. I have to stay strong, otherwise we're both going down. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunted in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Johnny Weir. I'm headed out to meet with Johnny Weir. He is a famous Olympic ice skater. He grew up here in rural Pennsylvania, and the location we're headed to is not far from where he grew up. It's supposedly this big building, some sort of a warehouse. Warehouses are notorious for housing ghosts. It must be haunting him, for real. Like, it, down to his core, for him to come all the way back to his hometown. There's something terrifying that we have to get to the bottom of. I'm going back to a childhood stomping ground that terrified me to the point that it's remained with me my whole life. I've traveled all over the world. I've been in weird underground tunnels in Slovakia. I've been in old hostels in China. And nowhere has stuck out more than this old brick building. I can't imagine walking over the doorstep. It's terrifying. It's a boogeyman that has been with me for my whole life. This place is the single scariest thing that I've ever experienced. I grew up in rural southeast Pennsylvania, and it's a very desolate sort of place. The first people that really settled my area were the Amish, Pennsylvania Dutch. And a lot of their European mysticism, I think, came with them. And driving through my area, people have stars on the outside of their houses, and those are supposed to ward off evil. It's creepy, all the things that can hide in the hills of, of Pennsylvania. When I was little, there was a property that was owned by close family friends. It was this ominous, brick, scary building sitting almost on the train tracks. It just had this very Salem witch sort of very sinister feeling. There were so many occasions when I had to be close to the building or in the vicinity, and I always felt so 
off when I was there. I remember really distinctly feeling not just uneasy in a kind of like I'm on a boat for the first time sort of way, but uneasy in the pit of your stomach where you start to feel nauseous, your head starts to feel swimmy. I felt that there was a ghost or a spirit or somebody around that was gonna kidnap me and kill me or do something to me. We'd roll up in, in our family car, and I would come up with excuses not to get out of the car. All right, let's go. I would feign any illness, you know, life-threatening or not, to keep me sitting in the car because the car was safe. If I was forced to get out of the car, it was like a short-term paralysis. Like, I didn't want to walk too close to that end of the property where the brick house sat. I didn't want to go anywhere near there. So my young parents also had young parent friends, and I was forced and obligated to hang out with their kids and play with their kids. But all the kids kind of knew that I was weird. <laughs> they liked to pick on me a bit. And they knew that I was afraid of this old brick building. They knew that I was terrified of it. For most kids, like a spooky old place is awesome to hang out in, but I never could cross the door jam. And one day, They thought it would be fun to be mischievous and sort of try and drag me in. It was two or three kids. You know, one grabs an arm and the other two grab legs. I screamed, I kicked, I spat, I clawed. I did everything that I could to not go in that building. I felt that there was something around. There's something wrong. <laughs> At some point, I wrestled myself away, and I was never in the building. As most kids do, I went with my concerns and my fears to my mom. Then my mother just kind of waved it off and was like, well, ghosts, ghosts don't exist. You shouldn't be afraid. It's just a brick building. But you feel things. Kids are very open to feeling things and knowing things. And these things were real to me. And to this day, I have never been in that building. I don't know if it's evil. I don't know if it's somebody there. It, just thinking about the building gives me goosebumps. This building and this place and this feeling has stayed with me for my entire life. I suppose the reason I feel strong enough to try and figure out what all of this is now is that I turned 30 and I'm a man. I'm no longer a boy. And now I am excited to get some, to get some answers as to whatever's on the other side of that door. I haven't actually stood on the property or on the ground since I was probably 12 years old, and I'm 30 now, so you do the math. It, it's pretty scary. 
I'm hoping to find out why this place has stuck in my memory and has been a boogeyman for my whole life. I'm feeling very unsettled. There's a sneaky energy. Like, I, I feel like I'm picking up on a man, a man's energy. This man, he can't be trusted at all. I feel a dark side to this man. I definitely don't feel safe at all. Today may be one of those days that if I'm not careful, I can take one of these ghosts home with me. That's a medium's nightmare. I feel like there's an energy of secrecy surrounding this building. It's, it's just, it's creepy. It's really creepy. Today's gonna be a long day. I can feel it. Cold and long day. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. I could totally see why he's frightened by this place. Something definitely happened in there. I hear women screaming, help, help, help. But it sounds like a, a muffled scream, like uh, almost like I feel like they might be gagged. I'm already feeling like violence. There's something freakish going on inside there. I hear women screaming, wailing, but it sounds like a, a muffled scream, like uh, almost like I feel like they might be gagged. This is this is not cool at all. What I'm feeling. This place is not safe. I feel like I see. Uh, a postman. What does that have to do with this place? Okay, Johnny. I don't even want to wait in front of this building. That's how uncomfortable I feel. My breath is short right now. It's dark out, which is quite different than I've ever experienced this place before. It's cold. And I... I really don't know how this is going to... to go. Oh, it's such a scary building. <laughs> This is terrifying. OK. Hey, Johnny. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, aside from this big brick scary uh, thing next Are you to nervous? It. Nice to meet you. Very good to meet you, too. You haven't been back here in how long? It's been. I was 12 probably the last time I was even this close to this building. I've never been inside this building. OK. I never allowed myself to, and I never felt that I was able to cross the, the threshold. And to this day, I still feel like I'm not really supposed to go in there. In this area, I was constantly afraid of being kidnapped. Do you think you were always afraid of getting kidnapped? That's a really interesting statement. Always, always afraid of getting snatched, even as an adult. 
that, really? that I'm going to be taken or that I'm going to be taken away from the life that I know. And that's something that always scared me. That was my biggest fear when I was young. And I don't know what about this building and how that would correlate with that. But just wow. this building would never allow me to cross it. When we're born, we, what people don't realize is we, we actually come in with fears. And I believe in past lives. I'm not saying that's what your case was yet, I don't know. But what I'm saying is the soul has the memory of every life it's ever lived. And the fresher you are as a child, the more current that memory might be. So who knows? I don't want to scare you. I just want to let you know that some stuff happened in there. Your vibes about this building, whether you're a kid or an adult, there's something freakish going on inside there. I don't know what's gonna happen here today. We're gonna take it step by step. Like really, I will share everything with you that I feel. I'll tell you really quick, I picked up on uh, a post office man, a postman, and there is some violent energy that I'm already feeling, like violence. I wanna really help you today. I might read you with personal messages. Is that okay? Do I have your permission to do that? if any loved ones come through? Sure. Okay. And I, I definitely will be their voice. And I hope they come early so they can help protect us. Agreed. But I'm thinking we should venture around this way. I feel drawn to these steps. Okay. Okay? Will you hold my paw? All righty. Do you want to do it? I'll let you do it. I'll go after you. All right. Look, I want you to look and tell me how you feel. I feel so wobbly. Is that just my own nervous energy? Why do I feel like it's this? It's the energy. I feel the energy, too. Um, I have to tell you what else I feel. I'll tell you what I'm seeing the minute I walked in. I see, um, like, boxed crates. And I don't know if they're here, but I feel like they stored crates in this building. I don't know what they were used for. Wooden crates. I mean, this has always been sort of for farm products. I mean, this was the place to come in our area for anything you needed for farming. Okay. I have to tell you though, John, I, I I feel like I'm back in a different a different century. I'm not quite visualizing something that happened when you were a child. I want to go even back more than that. Let's go. Like visually psychically, I'm I'm connecting with another time period. I'm talking the Civil War. Civil War. I saw a man. I still see a man. The post office man from outside? Yes. Thomas. I heard Thomas. Thomas. Tom the postman. This man, he has two faces. Like, he he makes it like, like he's nice to you at first. And then he has a shady, violent side. I'm going to actually use a word. I don't use very lightly. Torture. Thomas, I hear Thomas, Thomas. I feel like that name links very directly to this post office guy. I'm the postman. This man, he has two faces. Like, he he makes it like, like he's nice to you at first, and then, and then he has a shady, violent side. It's all a beautiful outside appearance uh, until he lures you in, and then you see all the ugliness and all the the junk on the inside. So that, that may be something that's connected to your experience. 
it could be that it's a um, parallel, and we'll, we'll get to it as we go, I don't know. I have a grandpa here for you, a grandpa. He said he's your grandpa. Thank you, Grandpa, just in time, so we don't have to, you know, feel Deal a little more comforted, comforted. I believe he's on your mom's side. You look like you have his smile. Has anybody ever told you that? And his fingernails and everything. Well, I haven't seen your fingernails because well, they're painted, your clothes, but... but the smile is this man's smile. And he's so warm, yeah. and um, he sees you. He watches over you. Um, He said, you, he said you're just like your mom. <laughs> now, I have to tell you, my own spirit guides will show me things in my own life, which is my own frame of reference. And my mom is a heavy smoker. And my children have nicknamed her Meemaw Puff Puff. And I'm supposed to say that to you for some reason. <laughs> Oh my God. I have no idea why they're showing me, me like my mom, Mima Puff Puff, they call her. My, it's because she smokes, so. My mother smokes heavily, and my grandfather's nickname was Puff. Oh my God. I'm not, you're ridiculous right Are now you with knowing me? this stuff. I kind of think your father's father is also in spirit. Is he John, like you? Okay, so you're having extra protection here, my dear. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys, wherever you Isn't are. Isn't that awesome? That's really awesome. You know what he just said? He said, I worked with energy too. What does that mean? He worked for a nuclear power plant. <gasps> so, nuclear energy. So he understands energy. And there's energy here today, like beyond. This is oh my this. God, I can't believe you know things. <laughs> well, what did you think, I was a fake? No, but I just didn't know that it was like that. Intense? Like he's right there. <laughs> well, it certainly is. No. He's really, really happy to see you, really happy. I do feel he's been to some of your events. Like, I feel like he's been there, like yep. in person though, not in death. Yes. Okay, because he's he showed me one that you, you were competing, you might not have won, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, because he kept showing me about the disappointment and he just he didn't know how to make things better for you. He was at he was at the Olympics and I got I did very, very well and I got sixth place. But you don't go to the Olympics to get sixth place. You go to win a medal and I did everything to win a medal and my whole family was devastated. He wasn't. Well, he, they were proud of me, but devastated. He was devastated the... for how you felt. And it was another disappointment. And he said it's similar to that feeling of how you feel now. Um, I think he means the separation, divorce. Yeah. It's, and it. That's exactly what my situation is. I'm mid-divorce. That's wild. I'm going through a personal situation with a man with two faces. Maybe it connects to the man that you're going through this with now, but he said the good news is you're surrounded by many, many dear friends, so you really have a beautiful support system, and your spirit can't be crushed. That's what he just said. Your spirit can never be crushed, never, even as a child. It seems like, like you just keep pushing on. I do. Is that a theme in your family? I think, I think a lot of it started with my mother, trudging through everything that, that needs to be trudged through and doing it with grace and dignity and... Wow. <laughs> cool, right? Thank you. It almost offsets the violence I feel here. And, and the negative, and, and actually, I'm gonna actually use a word I don't use very lightly, torture. There was torture right under my feet. Something happened. I don't know if there's a basement. I don't know if there's a basement. Because it's pushing me down. I want to do this, this whole floor, if there's another space we could go to, and we'll work our way down. How's that? 
that's fine because this is I'm I'm shaky and I still feel off. That's well, I, I know feel. what you mean. I've been there. I don't actually feel it right now because I feel like my guides need me to stay grounded so that, you know. You're going to protect me <laughs> when well, we go I, down there? I have to stay strong, otherwise we're both going down. OK? OK. Why don't we go that way? You've overcome a lot, it seems, in your life. Oh, yeah. This is the only thing that has stayed with me, no matter where I go in the world. The fear of stepping inside this building, and still, it, being in here is so, so surreal and something that I never thought that I would do. Something about energy in here, it feels like, it feels like I need to push out the walls. There's not enough space in here. I feel like I'm picking up on some women energy now. I heard women, like, screaming, like, help, help, help. <laughs> what the heck is this place? I just saw something over there. I just saw something move right over there. I want to get out of here. Something about energy in here, it feels like, it feels like I need to push out the walls. There's not enough space in here. I feel like I'm picking up on some women energy now. I heard women like screaming like, help, help, help. What the heck is this place? I don't understand this. but I see nothing but black women. I, I would say they were women slaves. Do you think maybe there was that situation where we're very close to the Mason-Dixon line here, separated north from south in the yes. Civil War? Slaves would, would obviously have to come north. Yes, to get to so this. So the is Underground Railroad, I don't know if this building would have been part of it, because as I understand this building, was after the Civil War. I believe that, but I see another structure here that burnt down. Wow, so if something burned down, and the, all of that, when something burns down, all of that negative energy stays. That. The energy is still, doesn't, doesn't go away because, especially if there's a trapped or a um, earthbound spirit, a fire doesn't Kill. help that. <sighs> Hold on, it's a lot of evil energy here. There's, um, there's something about, be, something being transported back and forth and back and forth. Like, I feel like I'm inside of a cage, but I don't feel they're animals. I feel they're people. I see that man. The postman, is he still here? This is all connected. How's it going? Good. There's that two, two faces again. Right. Like, I, I see him delivering mail to people, and I see him going like this. Like, he's, he wants to know a lot of things about the town and about people. But I feel like it's that inside information that he uses to make his money. See, this is the thing about this man. He found a way to make a buck that no one else thought of. That's what I feel. And these women are just like 
like things that were, I want to say sold. I keep feeling sold. I keep seeing money exchanged. Well, then we've got slavery. This looks like, this looks like more than slavery. This looks like, this does look like kidnapping. I keep seeing black women screaming and they're running to get away. How many women do you see? Um, I, I don't, right now I see two. Like, but I hear the cries of many. So I feel as if- It was a consistent It might have been an ongoing, right, exactly. Does the name Sarah mean anything to you? Maybe her name was Sarah. I just saw something over there. I just saw something move right over there. You... I just saw a shadow. I want to get out of here. They don't want us in there. I don't know what that was. I just have this feeling that there's going to be something horrible. The story of your soul was horrific at one point. Maybe her name was Sarah. I just saw something over there. I just saw something move right over there. You... I just saw a shadow just go, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. Oh my God. Holy crap. They don't want us in there. I don't know what that was. It was dark. A dark shadow. A very dark shadow. So we don't go back in. I'm not going back I, in. I'm there. not going back in. There. No, guys, I'm sorry. I want to. I want to go down, though. I know that's crazy, but I, I have to finish this uh, investigation. I want to go to the basement because I was feeling something very significant under my feet earlier. Where are these steps over here? Come on, John. There's a lot of cobwebs down here I'm seeing. I'm sorry, I scared you. No, it's okay. Jeez, where are we? Oh my oh, God. Oh, there's a well. Holy mackerel, Andy. Do you think that this is the original foundation? Look at this stone. It's very, very old. This is old. John, look at this well. A I real mean, well. That doesn't make me feel nice. Well, I was expecting to feel a dead body in there and I just, I didn't. So that's good. Yes. How do you feel? Because I could see the look on your face. Um, I feel I felt wobbly all night and I just have this very, horrible feeling that the next turn we make, there's going to be something horrible. And I can't see things, and I don't have the gift, but I've never been able to get this place out of my mind because it was so scary. Do you believe that you've lived before? I do. You've lived a lot of lives, I see. Uh, I absolutely feel you have a very, very old soul. Um, you're, you've lived many lives as a woman. That and makes perfect sense. I love being the mother figure. I love protecting. I love preparing dinner. I love being glamorous. I love to be beautiful. Because you were glamorous many times. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. Your story wasn't always so sweet and nice. Your soul, the story of your soul, was horrific at one point. I'm gonna tell you what I feel very strongly now that I'm tapped in. 
to your soul. You were black, you were a black woman, and you were captured. And you were captured by this man. You were one of them. You were Sarah. And in that lifetime, you decided you were gonna make the best of a bad situation. And you know you do that. I'm gonna tell you what I feel very strongly now that I'm tapped in to your soul. You were black, you were a black woman, and you were captured. And you were captured by this man. You were one of them. You were Sarah. You absolutely were kidnapped and you were sold into slavery. He would sell even the free women. Here. I'm gonna say he would sell them down south. And in that lifetime, you decided you were gonna make the best of a bad situation. You used all of your charm and all of your personality the way you do today to get people to like you. And you know you do that. <sighs> this family fell in love with you. They couldn't help but fall in love with you. Once they fell in love with you, they gave you your freedom. You chose not to leave them alone, old, and sick. And you lived the rest of your days with them loving you and you taking care of them. I keep seeing you putting cold rags on the woman's head when she was dying in bed. This was the slave master's wife. You know how to win people over in this lifetime. Those skills started in that <laughs> lifetime. This Sarah, I mean, it, it fits kidnapping, being taken away from a life that I know. It was my biggest fear. And I love nothing more than taking care of people that I love. They never knew love. You showed them how to love. You make people feel good. You make people laugh. You make people connect to you. This journey of who you are and having people like you and just, just being you, you started it back in that lifetime. I think that this is a very touching story um, of your life, of your soul. I think it, it really does seem to answer a lot of your questions. Do you want to go sit and chat about today? Yes, please. All right. Oh, boy. Let's have a seat. So what do, what do you think about what was uncovered today, everything that I saw and tuned into? The thing that I took out of today was my belief that there are things from my past that helped make me into who I am now, that there was more about my makeup that came from long before I was a child. That's true. That's very, very true. I mean, if, if to live Sarah's life and to have it that, that horrific moment, no wonder I couldn't come to this place. And I feel like you took that story and you've brought it with you to each lifetime. You've really used everything of who you are as a person and you make it work to your advantage. And I feel in doing that, you're a teacher. You're a teacher to so many people. I think you looked back today so that you can move forward. But this is liberating, this is freedom. This is just another fear that you stared right in the face and said, okay, next. Yeah. And based on what you told me is like, it's a, it's a big turning point in your life. You're, you're, you're kind of, you're in it. 
you're in a lot of turmoil right now. Horrible for, turmoil. It seems. But this definitely gives me the power of knowing that I've got somebody with me, mm -hmm. plus the people around me, my grandfathers. I know. I mean, that, that in itself means so much, waking up tomorrow and feeling strong and powerful and, and empowered. It gives you a sense that you really are on the right track. And in this lifetime, you're winning them over. <laughs> and, it's, and it's still early in the game. Yes. And who knows what other adventures you'll be going on. I hope they're good. <laughs> if Sarah's life turns out the way it did, I think you'll never go to that dark place again. Right. OK, we're good? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You are the best. Oh, no, you are. It's so nice to meet you <laughs> and have this journey with you. And you too, and thank you for protecting me. <laughs> you got it. All right, let's go. You ready? Yeah. Go fight the cold. The things she told me about my family, about my grandfather, nobody could have known, aside from our immediate family. I'm terribly honored that I had the opportunity to walk through this part of my life with her. I've been on edge all day about coming here because it, this building has held such a place of terror for me since I was very young. But now having walked through the entire building and learned what I learned today, it doesn't scare me anymore. I'm liberated from this place. Looking back, Johnny was terrified to enter an old warehouse that haunted him during his childhood. Today, by facing his fears and exploring the secrets that lay within its walls, we discovered that his feelings of dread are directly related to a violent past life experience. By understanding his connection to the building's history, Johnny is able to move forward in this lifetime without the cloud of mystery that has always surrounded it. It's an interesting lesson for all of us who have unexplained feelings about certain people, places, or things we encounter. The fact is, the truth may very well lie in the journey of our souls.